Well, good morning, Dean Boerder from Innes Image Ministries in Durban, South Africa. Um, I've been working through a series of the meanings that are, are as I meditate on that incident at the well with the Samaritan woman and Jesus. And, you know, this morning I wanted us to imagine that that woman represents organized church, that conglomerate, which uh, we refer to as the church. You know, the denominational churches, the non-denominational churches, the non-affiliated, affiliated, or whatever, right? Spread out through the world. And as we know that our Lord, the eternal spring, the shepherd of our souls, is sitting at the well, and he's um, about to have an interaction with the Samaritan woman. Someone who has a form of religion. Someone who has a heart to know God. So let's take for a moment that this woman is this church. And she's heading up to the well with two buckets. And let's consider that the one bucket is tradition the teachings of man, the laws and ordinances of man. And let's imagine that the other bucket is the bucket of religion and all the laws and ordinances of religion. The things that are the letter that kills, the things that regulate our behavior. And yet, all of it, fleshly. And let's look at this woman who had five husbands and now is with a sixth man to whom she's not married. And let's imagine for a moment that that number six is the number of man. And whilst we can speculate about the other five, but Certainly the number five was the number of grace. And so this church is no longer married to grace. It's married to man. It's walking in the flesh. It's bound by tradition, by the teachings of man. And all of the different parts of her body are regulated and held in place by the conventions, the traditions that are taught, that are not necessary truth. Right? You come and worship with us, we're the Baptists, or you come and worship with us, we're the Methodists, or we're the New Apostolic Reformation, or whatever these things are all bound by tradition and regulation. And, but there's, there's no living water because you walk in there and you, you're trying to obey all these things so that you can feel included. And, and, um, but you aren't, right? There's no nourishment. After spinning on the wheel, you suddenly find that Tradition can't satisfy you and nor can religion. And that the thing that you were looking for, that connection never happened. So here comes this woman, you know. She's now in a relationship with man. Right? She's about to have a revelation. And... One of the things that this relationship with man has brought into the life of the woman is leadership. We have to take a solid look at leadership because leadership 
and the theory of leadership comes from man. The living water that Christ gave us is a partnership. He says that he is a joint heir with us. He says he is one spirit with us. He says the life that we now live is the life of Christ within us by faith. It's not about leadership. He has joined himself to us, joined himself to what we're going to produce, joined himself to what we're going to possess, joined himself to all of the destiny that is in us. He's not our leader. He co-joins himself to our inheritance. He works with us and inside of us to ensure we possess. That is the river of life. That is the great shepherd. Do you know what leadership has produced? Carnal fruit. Because that kind of leadership that comes from the world is based on pride. It's a flesh pot of sin. And how do you know? Well, look at its fruit. It's filled with uh, contention. It's filled with competition. It's filled with comparison. The measurement of its success is corrupt. How many people do you have? How much money are you making from your church? That thing is full of hojas. Leadership. And yet, it's defended by the body of Christ. But it's not the model Christ gave us. He said, if you want to have prominence, if you want to have position, which is what's driving that thing, because see, Christ is humility. He's not pride. He's not the elevation of self. The one who wants prominence in the body of Christ must become the servant of all. It's... It's a totally different life. He tells those who were seeking position, it isn't so in the kingdom of God. Why? Because we know God has come inside of us. He has joined his, uh, his life to us. He's joined the outcome of our life. He's involved. So this leadership model that wants to drive, that wants to manage, that wants to possess us, is a foreign concept in the body of Christ. And so, for God to move and for him to bring about his eternal purpose, which is to have the believers rise to the fullness of the body, oh, sorry, the fullness and the stature of Christ Jesus himself, he placed servants in the body, not leaders, not leaders who are building, building, building. No, servants that, that disciple people into their destiny, into their image of Christ, into their fullness. They are sold on that. Not on position, not on prominence, not on influence, not on fame. Effectiveness is the measure. Discipleship is the measure. Not the size of your congregation. That says nothing about your influence. It says nothing about your effectiveness. It's a wrong measurement, right? It's the measurement that, that gets taught at leadership schools. The body of Christ is not so. And, and God's Holy Spirit is right now cutting us loose from that. It won't exist in the body of Christ that he's building. It isn't part of Christ. It's part of man. She was married to a man. Sorry, she was in a relationship with a man. She hadn't married him yet. She probably would. 
but she comes to the well where the living water is and he unmasks all of this stuff. The tradition, go here to worship, but you go there to worship. And God says he's looking for people who are connected in spirit. He's looking for worship who worship in spirit. They know their God. They know he's here. Being formed with me, with you, into a new image, his image. And the old is gone and the new has come. Hallelujah. Let's drink from the well of humility. Let's drink from the well of his purpose. That if you have a call of God, it is not to build something is to release people into their fullness, into the, the call they have, into the effectiveness that God wants with them. So that lady, she was drinking from the wrong well. And today, the organized church drinking from the wrong well. For years, I drank from that well. Going to leadership meetings in Bloemfontein. In South Africa, year after year, drinking from the well. That well can't satisfy you. That well brings fleshly outcomes. That well brings hurt. That well brings pain because it was never the intent of Christ. So he's sitting at the well today and, and he's calling and waiting for us to come up the well to try and fill our, our buckets again with tradition and religion and suddenly go, ah, oh, Jesus, you've confronted our hearts. So let me assure you of this. God will confront your heart and confront my heart with those flesh pot things, desires, for prominence, for position, for title, for all kinds of things that have absolutely nothing to do with the way that he functions, the way that he operates. He placed his spirit inside of us to work with us, to cooperate with us, to bring us into the fullness of the manifestation of a son of God. That's our destiny. That's the church's destiny. And when Paul talks about the church, how does he talk about it? The eye and the leg. We're all together. All together, fullness of God in Christ Jesus. Connection. All the ligaments and the bones and the things all working together. There cannot be this separation that tradition brings us. This laboring, this heavy burden. You know, and, 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 and so many people who had willing hearts. Get, get burdened right out of the body of Christ. Lost. Burnt out. Because it can't satisfy you. And God knows that. So the move of God that's coming, it's going to open the doors of our hearts and help us to see what water we drink. So today, come to the living waters. Come to the wellspring of life. Throw away the buckets. You know, that lady left her buckets there. She didn't need them anymore. <laughs> when you find Christ, you throw away the bucket. Hallelujah.